Today I'm going to show you why the Schlage Encode Wi-Fi Smart Lock is my favorite so far by comparing it with previous smart locks that I've used over extended periods. I'll also explain the benefits of integrating it with Home Assistant. The first smart lock that I installed was the August 4th generation Wi-Fi Smart Lock. The main issue here was the battery life which was less than 90 days and the batteries turned out to be very expensive being the CR123s. The keypad also proved to be quite unreliable. My second choice was the Asher SL. This is a high quality lock but I made the mistake here of ordering the Zigbee module which meant that I didn't have access to the smartphone app which would allow me to manage things like the pin codes. The Schlage Encode Smart Wi-Fi Deadbolt comes in either a matte black or a satin nickel plate. Being Wi-Fi, you don't need any sort of hub for Bluetooth or anything like that. It is allowing for a cross bore of 54 millimeters and a door thickness of anywhere from 35 millimeters to 46 millimeters. This one does not include a handle. Some of the features, multiple access codes as well as temporary ones. You can send virtual keys via text messages. You can use voice commands from either Amazon or Google Assistant. And as you'll see later in this episode, it does connect very nicely to Home Assistant. Having a look at the hardware, the front faceplate is nice and heavy aluminium. And on the back side, you can see we've got a cable which goes through to the back side of the lock. Seems to be really nicely made. Feels really, really heavy. On the front, I really like that they have an analog lock so that if the batteries go flat, you can always use the key. Then we've got the keypad over here. Now this can be a little bit difficult to see at night until you press one of the keys and then it lights up really nicely. This is the plate that goes on the back side. You can see we've got a manual lock for opening and closing from the inside. We've got our QR code to scan to link it up to the app. This is where the battery compartment slides in and then this is the cable that you need to connect to the front unit before you screw this into place. The back side of the lock is also made of cast aluminium and this section over here is made of plastic. The battery compartment, it takes four AA cells. Um, I've been using this lock for about five months now and I'm at 40% battery life. So I'm really impressed with the battery life. So this just slides in like that over there. This is the face plate that goes at the back and holds the front of the lock on. Always make sure that you have it this way up when installing it. You can see there it tells you top side. And this is the actual deadbolt itself. Feels nice and solid and is really easy to fit. Once again, always ensure that you follow these markings telling you which side goes to the top. Once you've removed the old hardware, slide in the deadbolt and fix the two screws to make sure that it's nice and snug. Next, install the front plate. Make sure to line up the spline that goes through the deadbolt and carefully push the cable through to the back side without damaging it. When installing the back plate, first of all, make sure that you get the little cable through the small square hole, then tighten the two long screws. Now you can plug the cable into the rear section of the lock. It can only go one way around, so it's pretty easy. Next, you fix the two small screws that will hold the back piece of the lock onto the locking plate. Final step is just to slip the cover over the battery case and check to see that the lock is opening and closing easily. First of all, download the Schlage app and then select sign in, create an account, type in your name, followed by email and select a password. Create an account, input the verification code that it'll email to you and confirm. So now we're gonna add the first lock. So we go, I own the lock, continue, scan the QR code on the back of the lock. Yes, the lock is installed. Now it'll start connecting automatically to your lock. Now we need to connect the Wi-Fi. So you need to connect your 2.4 gigahertz. So make sure your phone is connected to your 2.4 gigahertz network. Select the network, enter the Wi-Fi password. Now it'll start testing the Wi-Fi connection. 
success. Now enter a name for the location, type in an access code, which will be your first password to be used by the lock and give it a name. I'm just gonna call mine admin. Open the door slightly and it's all ready to go. The app is really easy to use. You can unlock and lock at the touch of a button. You can see the connection status and battery level. If we go into settings, you see that you can set up things like an auto lock delay. That's really good. It will basically lock the house automatically if you forget to lock it. It also has a built-in alarm, which will detect if someone is trying to fiddle with the door. You can easily check to see a history of when the door has been opened and locked. And over here, you can go along and set up access codes. So we can go along and we can create new access codes as required. We can also go along and create virtual keys in order to send someone a temporary unlocking key. The panel is really easy to use. You just type in your key code and then the door will open. One thing is that at night, in order to get the panel to light up, you need to press one of the keys. And this means that sometimes you start off with an incorrect number. Home Assistant has an integration into Slage. So just go add integration, type in Slage, enter your username and password. We can select an area. So I'm gonna put the front door. So from within Home Assistant, we have the lock and unlock directly from there. We have the one touch locking setting and we can set the time for that. We also have our key press beep so we can enable or disable that. We've got our battery percentage over there and the keypad enabled okay or not. And from here, we could create any sort of automations that we wanted to with this lock. So overall, this lock is working absolutely awesome for me. The only thing I would recommend would be really great to add to this would be a fingerprint recognition sensor. Anyway, that's all for now. Hope you've enjoyed this content. If you have, please like and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.